This video will demonstrate how to integrate Web3 functionality into any Shopify theme. My name is Hakeem and I'm a Web3 engineer working for eBay. My mission is to educate you on Web3 development in e-commerce. So let's begin. First of all, what is a Shopify theme and theme app extension? Well, a theme is simply just the actual storefront that a user will engage with when they come to your store. And a theme app extension is a code block that you can extend from your embedded application. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Now the requirements for this tutorial are the following. Make sure you have Shopify CLI version 3.0 or higher. Ruby of version 2.75 or above. Git version 12.28 or above. Node.js of version 14.17 or above. A package manager of your choice. In this case, we're going to be using NPM. Make sure you have an existing Shopify development store and partner account. If you're not sure on how to do this, please check out the links in the description below. And an optional requirement is to have an Ethereum provider key, such as Infura, if you want to allow for different wallets, such as Coinbase or Taurus wallet, make sure you have an Ethereum, uh, an Ethereum provider key. Okay, if you haven't already, open up your Shopify apps directory and in the terminal of the root directory, uh, input the following command, which is npm run Shopify app generate extension, enter. Now you want to select theme app extension and the name. So we're going to go with crypto theme. Great, so now we have this extensions folder and another folder called Crypto Theme, which contains the assets, blocks, locales, and snippets folder. The only folders you need to care about are the assets and blocks. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna paste in a block that I prepared for the Connect Wallet. So new file, we'll call this Connect Wallet Block Liquid it in so let me explain what this is so this is a liquid file now this is the actual uh template that you, the user will see and you as a merchant will be able to edit in your theme editor and it has two parts to it so it has the button so the html on top and then below that we have this schema section here and the html part is quite self-explanatory so the id will come in handy in the actual JavaScript part when we're trying to do manipulations to it. And this style here, as you can see, we're passing through this block.settings object here. And this is coming from the schema down below. This schema has a name, a target. The target is a part of the theme editor, which I'll show you later on. Now, and the settings below here, and the settings array here contains objects for the different parts of the button. Now these can be changed in the actual theme editor, which again, I will show later on. But for now, we can see this background color, color and border, which correspond to these three objects here. Now for best practices, I'm gonna be doing short but frequent commits. So this is essential, especially when you're doing Shopify apps to avoid breaking changes. Because if you do, you'll know which commit caused it as opposed to one gigantic commit where you're not too sure what exactly caused the breaking change. So if I head over to here, block, commit that, and we'll keep it local for now. Now let's create the JavaScript that will actually connect us to the front end. For this tutorial, you will need the following NPM packages. So the Ethers project, the Web3 modal, Wallet Connect, and the Coinbase Wallet SDK. The Wallet Connect and Coinbase Wallet SDK are just here to serve as an example of how you would introduce different wallet connectivity. Now that the NPMs have been installed, let's head over to the Assets folder, create a new file. Let's call it uh, Connect Wallets.js. And then in here, I'm gonna just import. So I'll just paste it in these imports. Now we're gonna implement the actual logic. So first of all, we need to initialize the provider. Looks like GitHub Copilot's already caught me there. So connected, 
Okay, then get the next thing. So these two, the provider will be dynamic. That's why it's a let. And the connected is just a constant that we don't want to change. Instead of having to keep manually inputting the string, it's just safer to have a constant assigned to it. Okay, and then we're gonna to need to select the actual button itself. So const button, yep, there we go. And then we're gonna add an event listener to the actual button. But we'll do this after we've defined the actual function. The first function we're gonna write is the actual get web3 modal. And this will be the actual setup. And as you can see, Copilot's given me the actual uh, boilerplate code for me, which is pretty convenient. Now, the way it works is in the modal, you define the network. So we're going to be using mainnet for now. And then cache provider means that you don't have to keep. So for example, um, if you use MetaMask, it will remember that you connected with MetaMask last time. So you don't have to keep going through the modal to connect to MetaMask. You can just go straight to MetaMask or Coinbase wallet or whichever one you used last time. And the provider options here are the different wallets that we can introduce. So web modal just facilitates the connectivity and also the options that you can provide to your users. So we have Wallet Connect here and Coinbase Wallet here and an Infura ID, which I said was optional, but in this case, if you want to use it, it's mandatory. Um, but for the MetaMask wallet connectivity, you do not need the Infura ID. Okay, so after this, we need to define the actual connect wallet function. So function connect wallet. Let's do the let's do the autocomplete then. Actually, this will need to be asynchronous. So this is again, this is just setting up the connectivity connection. Wait for connect, and then the provider. So this provider, like I said, is dynamic depending on which wallet, um, which provider you're using. So that's why we define it as let up here. Then we're gonna need to actually get the accounts. So again, accounts, provided that list accounts, this gives us the actual accounts. So this is, an, this is an array. The first index of this account array will always give us the current connected wallet. So we just simply do if account zero, I'm gonna do button, text contents connected. So now we're gonna use local storage to remember the wallet that's been connected. So when a user refreshes the page, they don't get disconnected every time. So local storage oops, set item, and this uses a key value pair. So it will be full address and then account zero. If the accounts are length equals zero, so as in there's no wallet there, just return nothing. And finally, we need an event listener every time the DOM is loaded again to actually fetch that local storage. So we'll do the following. So we'll do window and event listener. So you can do load, but I prefer to do DOM content loaded event dot prevent default and then here we're going to get these stored yep so here we want to make sure that the button still shows connected when the user refreshes so we have to make sure that the window dot ethereum is defined and stored is not null. So that's correct. And cool. So that should be everything for this um, connect wallet JavaScript file. Oh yeah, so now we need to actually add to the top the event listener. So we do button to add event listener, click, and then this will call the connect wallet function down here. Okay, now we're gonna add in the CSS. So in the same assets folder, let's do connect wallet CSS. We'll just paste this in for now. It's just, um, this will be the default styling. So this actually cannot be changed in the theme editor. This will be like, as I said, the default. 
So we save that. So back in the connect wallet block.liquid file, we have to define where the JavaScript and CSS is coming from. So the CSS is straightforward, which would be CSS and then the <clears throat> So the CSS is straightforward. It's just CSS followed by the actual CSS file. And since we're not actually using any special libraries for CSS, we don't need to bundle it. But for the JavaScript, because we're using these NPM libraries here, we do need to bundle it. So for now, let's just save it as is and make a commit. So, um, okay. So now we need to add in a bundler to actually bundle the JavaScript file so we can use it in the front end. So because the theme app extension files don't actually exist in the server and instead in the browser directly, you will need a bundler to optimize the JavaScript files. And if you use any uh, libraries for the CSS, you will need it for the CSS too. But for this example, only the JavaScript is required. In this example, we're going to use Webpack version 4.44 because version five and above um, doesn't have the polyfills required for the ethers library. And although there are fixes for it, for simplicity, we'll keep it to Webpack version four. Along with this, we we'll also need the CLI. So just follow these steps. So we're going to run npm i dash I save, save exact, and then Webpack. The reason why I'm using Webpack 4.4, 4.0 it's because that's the only one that worked for me personally, but feel free to use any bundle of your choice. You could use Vite or Turbo Pack. As long as you have the configuration down as I show you in the tutorial, it should work the same. Okay, so now that Webpack's been installed, let's create a config file in the root directory. So we'll call it webpack config.js. And then we'll need the path. node and then we need to do the module to export syntax now in here we're going to define the entry and output paths for the bundle javascript file so for the entry it will not be this but it will be the extensions folder slash crypto theme slash assets and then the name of the actual javascript file so it's connect wallet.js and then for the bundled output file we'll do the following so file name will be not this but bundled otherwise it will overwrite the original one and then the path which would do like so let's be consistent we have the entry property with the file which we want to bundle and the output object that contains the file name of the newly bundled file and the path to that file. Hit save. And then in the package.json, we'll need to define a script to actually bundle it. So we'll call this new script webpack bundle. And then in here, we'll pass through webpack the mode, which will just be development. Right, so now if we execute this script. As you can see, we have a newly bundled file here. So let's commit this. So we we'll call this webpack added. Oh, well, one last thing I forgot to do is to add into this file here, into the liquid file. So we added the CSS. Now we need to add in the JavaScript, which would be not this, but bundled, because we want to access the, the optimized and bundled version of it, not the uh, connect wallet JS one, as it will not actually work. So there we go, hit save, let me just commit this. So from here, you are now ready to uh, preview your theme app extension. Okay, so now if you run npm run dev, so when you run npm run dev, you should be able to see the theme app extension um, in your terminal in just a few moments. So here we have the crypto theme app, app extension there. And then, so now you will have three options that you have to go through. Okay, so I made a mistake here. It's not called CSS, it's called stylesheet. This is not CSS, this is called stylesheet. 
as you can see it says connect wallet button in the liquid template but in the actual javascript i did not include but in the actual javascript i did not include the connect wallet button like so so it says connect wallet button okay great so let me just rebundle that again now if i bundle this again and then go back to the terminal okay now it's being pushed as you can see so what we need to do now is go through these three steps here so we first need to enable it so open Okay, so you need to click enable, head back, and then head over to the theme editor. So this is the theme editor here, and this is where you'll actually add in your code blocks. And there's two types, there's, um, there's app blocks, and there's app embed blocks. And in this example, we've used a simple app block. And these are only supported by the latest Shopify themes of version 2.0 which is what this is here. If you want to support old themes as well, you would need to use an app embed block, which I'll dive into in a future video. So if you head down to the app section here and click add block, type in connect, you will see the name of your app block. So I have two here, this is, this is from a different application, but here, the one that we made is the lucrative shareholder app. So click on that. And as you can see, the connect wallet is here and in and to the right and in the right column, you can edit the color so you can change it to red. You know, if you wanted to, you change the label. So connect MetaMask, for example, and then hit save. If we head back and then preview it, scroll down we can see the button is here. It now works. So we have MetaMask, Wallet Connect, Coinbase. Obviously, for this example, we're gonna use MetaMask. Let me just connect, connect. And there we go, we're now connected. Great, so now you know how to implement Web3 functionality using Shopify's theme app extensions. For more information on how to create a new Shopify app using the latest guidelines, Check out my previous video on how to create a Shopify app in 2023.